In 2005, we set up a, a project um, visiting um, fishing communities along the coast, allowing women to tell their own stories of what life was like for them. We didn't have a particular agenda, um, we just let them explore whatever they wanted to talk about. Um, the main theme that came through in all the interviews we did um, was how hard life was for them, um, but the fact that they would never ever change it. Um, they, they all sort of got up very, very early in the morning, helped their families and husbands with the skeining and, and baiting, and then had the, the normal um, family duties. Um, and it was a very long and hard day for them. Um, but every woman that we spoke to on the project just said, you know, what a fantastic community life they had. And it, everybody was very supportive of one another and really wished the old days were back. As we did the interviews, um, a few common themes came out. Um, one was superstitions um, and another one was, was ganses because obviously in the winter months the women um, would sit knitting uh, the ganses for the husband and, and other family members. So yes, we've learned quite a lot about, about the ganses. Um, I think originally they came about um, because if, if the husband was washed overboard, the, the way that they were identified was through the pattern on the ganze. Each fishing community had their own pattern and um, obviously if they retrieve the body then um, they would identify that back to the, the fishing community. Some of them had their initials in it um, but it, it was mainly the, the pattern that was um, associated with the fishing community. Um, they traditionally wore a navy blue one. Um, I think sometimes on a, a, they would have a Sunday best but that only came out on a Sunday and that tended to be a grey one. Um, and then I, I think also there was a white one which was used for getting married in, but traditionally they, they stuck with the navy blue, which was knitted in a one piece, no seams, um, so it wouldn't come off the body in the sea. Um, it was knitted on five needles, often held on a belt, um, and, and worked up in one piece. And some of the patterns that we came across are here. Um, there was the cable, they, they were all associated with the, the sea, so there was the cable. Um, some of the ladies had their own traditional patterns. This one was called Betty Martin, um, and that tend to be used in Filey and Whitby. There was the herringbone, um, there was fish scales, um, the steps, there was a zigzag and ladder pattern. Um, but most of the ladies had their own pattern not written down, they would do it from memory. Some are passed from mother to daughter. Yeah, I was brought up um, in a little place called Port Mulgrave. Father was a fisherman there. His brother was a fisherman in Whitby, and he was from a, a fishing family in Whitby. Um, and as long as I can never remember, um, he always wore the old traditional fisherman's guernseys and so did his brother. So from quite an early age I've been brought up with these old jumpers uh, as part of my life really. This one's uh, my own. This is a, um, actually a flamber pattern. Um, the one you see behind me, the white one, is also on my father's but it, it now belongs to my sister. I think my sister wears this jumper on a regular basis although I like to keep mine in, uh, in good condition. I keep it locked up in a drawer to one. Hopefully I'm going to pass it on to one of my sons, who's now a fisherman. Yeah, if you can see from the flamber pattern, the ladders are different. Uh, the diamonds vary. And the flamber one has half its sleeve uh, normal pattern. Whereas the whippy one is patterned right to the end of the sleeves. I think the sleeves and the actual bodies were knitted as a tube so that as the fishermen wore their elbows out and the fronts of their jumpers they could actually be replaced. If you go to some of the smaller communities like Flamborough especially you'll see quite a lot of the fishermen will still wear them 
And I think the reason being is there's still ladies down in Flamborough that can actually knit these jumpers, because obviously they're, they're knitted in a specific way, and I don't think there's many, many people can actually do them now. So that there's, there's very few people left that can actually knit an original jumper. I started knitting as a child, um, before I went to school, because uh, my granny looked after us um, while my mum went to work. And so it was just one of the things that you taught the children to do. You learnt to knit, you learnt to sew. I even learnt to darn when I was very small. My granddad was a fisherman, my great granddad was a fisherman, and so um, it goes back a long, long way. Um, my uncles, all except one, were fishermen. So I didn't know anything else when I was growing up other than what life in a fishing family was like. Granny always had some um, knitting on the go and all the sons, my uncles and her husband, my granddad, always wore Guernseys. Never saw them in collar and ties. The importance is the fact that they are a, a very serviceable garment. They knit in the round, in one piece, so there's no seams. They knit on five needles, extra long needles because of the number of stitches you have on them. Fine needles, close knit, and so, as the saying goes, it turns the wind and the showers. You don't often see a fisherman in a, a, a coat if he's got a Guernsey on. They're made of 100% pure Yorkshire wool, and the pattern, being a very intricate pattern, obviously makes the, uh, them thicker as well and warmer. The hardest bit is your first cast on, because you cast on on these fine needles with double thickness wool, and the important thing is you've got all these stitches on about 304, I think I've got on this one, is when you join them up to make the circle, is not getting a twist in the bottom, because if you get a twist in the bottom, and you don't notice it and you knit away, there is nothing you can do about it apart from pull it out. And because it's hard with the double thickness, I always get a hole in my thumb. So I usually do four or five rounds and then I've got to wait for my thumb to heal, my finger to heal up. But, so that is the hardest part. And the second hardest part is setting the pattern. You start at the, the bottom and it's double thickness because that's where you get a lot of wear when they're pulled on and off. Then you go into a single one. Then it's got the plain panel at the bottom, and quite often, I'm turning it around so you can see it, there is the initials of the wearer. Now, my husband's initials are GT. Probably doesn't show up very well while it's in this state, but when it's stretched on the body, then of course, you can see it. The idea of this plain panel and the welt is they can be re-knit. When the bottom goes, you just take it off and knit a new bottom on. When it goes a bit further up, then you can take it off right up to there, put a new bottom on without it affecting the pattern on the, on the Guernsey itself. The next part then is the pattern. The steps are either in a harbour or going down to the beach. You can't get steps. So that's the steps. It's two meanings and fishermen used to be quite religious many years ago. They were into Methodism. So it's steps to heaven. The next one is the shingle, which is the beach. There's two shingles, that's a fine one then you can get a double moss stitch, which is, is the nearer you get to the cliffs, the thicker the, the pebbles are, and so that's for the shingle. The rope is self-explanatory, really. They use it everywhere. They have a rope because they use it for tying their anchors on, the crab pots, the lines, everybody, they all use ropes. The zigzag pattern is the going down the paths um, from the cliffs down to the sea. You never walk down the cliffs in a straight line, you walk in a zigzag fashion. There is another zigzag, it's a double one, which means the ups and downs of married life. 
and that always makes everybody smile when you tell them that one. We've got a diamond on this one. which represents the mesh of the crab pots or the salmon nets. And there's different diamonds in there uh, can be used. That's, that's a full one. You can get open ones which show up quite nicely. If you can see on this one, on this child's one, it's got an open diamond and I always prefer that one. This is typically a, a child's uh, filey pattern and this is the special sleeve that we get in filey called Betty Martin. Don't know the origin of Betty Martin. Um, we've tried to find out but nobody seems to know about that. You can get a pattern called a ridge and furrow because a lot of the fishermen had small holdings um, kept a few pigs, but they didn't call them pigs because that was superstition, it, they were called curly tails. Yeah. Yeah. Flamborough ones, they are more highly patterned than ours, but they have different things in like, they quite often have a heart, which means the love of a, a mother for a son, or the wife for a husband, which is, is quite nice, but you don't see that in ours. Um, Scarborough patterns are very plain up to about the under the arm and they just have this part across here the yoke which is patterned so you can recognize that quite easily. Um, Whitby ones again they're, they're plainer at the bottom of a big patch of plain at the bottom. Robin Hood's Bay and Runswick Bay they all have this much more plainer at the bottom and it's really only Filey and Flamborough um, and then I think when you get into Northumberland they're more highly patterned as well so it doesn't follow on really that each place I mean we're nearer to Scarborough but yet our patterns are so different and the idea it was a um, like a form of identification as well because if somebody was lost at sea then the body was washed ashore and um, somebody would then recognise the pattern. You know, if it had washed down the coast from Scarborough, they would know that it was a Scarborough Guernsey, so they would return the body to Scarborough. Families also have their own patterns, and so then that's how uh, they, they would be identified. So it's a, it's a bit like your passport. They're, they're just shorter in length than an ordinary jumper and they stop just above the wrist and that's purely and simply because they're always working in salt water. A it would wear the Guernsey out much quicker but also it can rub the skin and cause what they call salt water boils. So the fishermen usually wore like crepe bandages round the wrists so that they could just take those off when they'd finished their day's work and that's why the Guernseys the sleeves were just that bit shorter than an ordinary jumper would be. The Guernseys then last such a long time because of the work in them. This one was knit in 19, in the early 1960s and it's past redemption now, as you can see by the wear on here, but it's been a serviceable working garment for, I would think, at least 30 years. And that's the importance of the Guernseys, is because you don't just knit them for one season. You know, they last and last. And because they're pure Yorkshire wool, they are expensive to knit to start with. A lot of time goes in them. I have time myself at one time, and it took me 96 hours. So they're not something that you, uh, you want to knit this week and throw away next week. I would think maybe half a dozen people I know can knit them. One or two have knit them, probably knit one, and would never knit another one. Um, but no, there, there isn't many. But on the other hand, we've got not so many fishermen. You know, the fishing industry is in decline. And so 
they probably haven't anybody who could knit them a Guernsey. So the Guernseys are also uh, going out of fashion. You know, if their mums c couldn't knit, as often happens, you know, then they get married and the wives can't knit. So who knits them for them? At 96 hours and 50 pound for the wool, you know, nobody's going to take it up as a business, are they? You know, I've offered, well, no, I haven't offered. I've been asked many, many times. And when I say how much I would like for knitting it, no way. They would walk up and down the street knitting or stand at the front door and do the knitting. But I don't ever remember my granny going in to her neighbours just with a knitting. When you think that they had, she had nine children and a husband, she really didn't have a lot of time for socialising because she would skein the muscles in the winter, bake the lines, prepare the meals, clean the house and do a pick up a knitting when she just had five minutes to spare. She would walk down to the cliff top to see if the cobbles were coming in so that she could send one of the boys down to get the lines and the knitting would always go with her. She also went down and sat at the cliff top, which is just at the bottom of this street, you look out to see. And there's a row of seats, and that's where she used to go and set her pattern, because there's no patterns written down, or at least we haven't any written down in our family. You can get certain books now, which people have done, but all our patterns are in our heads. And so she would go down and sit there, so she had a little bit of peace and quiet. Um, and also a good light. And she would sit down there, set the pattern, and then away you went. <laughs>